Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney. Federal Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner is a sister to Stacey Abrams. She was appointed by Barack Obama and was on Joe Biden's shortlist to have been our latest Supreme Court justice. Instead, we've got Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, who was notoriously light on punishing child pornographers. Well, as bad as that is, we now know it could have been a lot worse because Judge Abrams Gardner is not just light on child pornographers, but she literally is married to a man named Jim Jimmy Gardner, who just got arrested Friday on human trafficking charges for allegedly trying to have sex, i.e. to statutorily rape a 16-year-old girl. Now, this happened in Tampa close to 2 a.m. when Gardner allegedly met the minor and asked her to join him in his hotel room. The girl was at first open to having sex with Gardner for money, likely, if I may add, because she was probably scared out of her mind. But once she gathered enough courage to refuse his demands later, he allegedly got angry at her, choked her, and then left the room allowing the girl to call 911. Stacey Abrams and her ilk like to tell us that human trafficking and pedophile rings are just cue-induced figments of our conspiratorial minds. Maybe because they've got a lot of skeletons in their own closets, and this is Exhibit A of that. Now, last week, we talked about the former head of the left-wing rag, The Recount, and how he was well-known for supposedly debunking the Pizzagate pedophile ring, and yet he just got arrested on his own child porn charges and on allegations he had tried to groom a young male teen online for sex. Are you noticing a pattern here because I am? Or what about, to cite our friend Luke Rosiak of The Daily Wire once again, the fact that, quote, a Satan-worshipping cult of pedophiles is blackmailing girls into cutting themselves. But the FBI didn't seem interested in that so much as the fact that one of its members once used the N-word, a Daily Wire investigation found. For years, the group known both as 764 and Harm Nation has tortured what, it is, what is believed to be hundreds or thousands of girls. But the FBI didn't put its cyber crimes or violence against children investigators on it. Instead, its interest appears to have peaked mainly by the fact that the group, most of whose victims are white teens, was once racist to a black girl. The domestic terrorism unit is investigating the Satanist pedophiles for white supremacy RMVE, or racially motivated violent extremism, even though the sole known arrest by the FBI is a Hispanic man who called the judge a cracker in court, according to court records and interviews. Angel Luis Almeida was indicted in January in New York City on charges of sexual exploitation, violation of the Mann Act, and possession of child abuse sexual material, with prosecutors writing that the defendant was an outspoken member of 764, a neo-Nazi network. One of the group's leaders is a 19-year-old called Yuri who calls himself a femboy, a term associated with left-wing queer culture. Critics say at best it's an example of the FBI misclassifying cases in order to tell Congress that right-wing domestic terrorism is the greatest threat to America. At worst, they say it's an example of the heinous torture of girls by pedophiles not being a priority unless there was an angle making it politically appealing to Democrats, end quote. This sounds exactly like the Muslim rape gangs of Europe and the free pass they largely get as long as the girls they're kidnapping and abusing are white Christians. That's wokeism for you. Rape and murder are not inherently wrong as long as the right criminals are doing it to the right victims. Whereas for conservative Christians, rape and murder, well, they're always wrong no matter who is the guilty party or who the victims are. We saw exactly that play out in Los Angeles, California, where a father and homeowner used his concealed carry weapon to chase off several armed thieves who jumped his fence and tried to ambush him as he opened his door, hands full with coffee, after a trip to the gym. Vince Ritchie was able to save his wife, his five-month-old baby, and his property from harm, and without killing anyone, even though he would have been well within his rights to, given that one of the would-be robbers pointed a gun at the young father. But instead of being hailed as a hero, the state is retaliating by revoking his concealed carry permit. Authorities say it's because he yelled at LAPD officers when they showed up to his house, which I think is a joke of an excuse if I've ever heard one. Is there proof of that? Cops have body cameras, and Vince obviously has his doorbell camera footage and surveillance footage. And even if he did, that's not illegal. Were the cops fake cops, meaning woke ideologues with a badge since we've been chasing out good cops for many years now? So were they already giving Vince crap, grief, for not taking a bullet to the brain and letting his family be ransacked like a good sheep should in this era of tolerance for everyone but law-abiding Americans? Vince and the rest of us all know it's because L.A. Democrats would rather the headline news be that night. Father slain returning home from gym to see wife and daughter, rather than father heroically saves wife and daughter from thugs who decide to mess with the wrong guy. 
Again, look at the father and look at the criminals. Remember about what I was saying with the left and how identity politics colors even their perception of violent crime. The state wants you defenseless in the face of the crime they've unleashed. They want you at their mercy, impotent, and needing only them to save you from the crisis of their own doing as the state grows ever larger.